Hello, uh, this class uh, is focused on understanding how we can design uh, process flow uh, for MAMPS based micro sensors uh, and these sensors that we will be learning in this particular class would be used to understand or diagnose cancer. So, when you talk about cancer, uh, we are focusing on tissue related cancer, okay, cancer that occurs on in tissue. And uh, uh, to start with, we will uh, talk about breast cancer. Uh, as we already know, uh, breast cancer is second largest cause uh, cancer related uh, uh, death, uh, the second largest cause of cancer related death uh, in women, uh, not only in world, but also uh, in India. And that is why from clinical perspective, uh, this is very important disease that one needs to understand and uh, there are open ended problems uh, that one needs to uh, find the solutions for. So, when I said about uh, when I say about open ended problems that means the problems that uh, uh, about the diagnosis it is not that we do not have cure for cancer the only thing that we are lacking is uh, a right time diagnosing of cancer. So, when we have a proper diagnosis then we can uh, go for a proper treatment. Uh, so, uh, as an engineer or as a scientist how we can come up with an idea uh, or, or novel sensors uh, that can aid the clinicians or a path lab to diagnose cancer at early stage right this is the focus. So, when we talk about cancer uh, in particular tissue related cancer uh, the, the tissue property changes as the cancer progresses. So, when I say about tissue property changes what does that mean? Uh, if you have ever noticed a person suffering from uh, cancer uh, he will start developing uh, or she will start developing a, a lump right. Uh, not every lump is cancer uh, for example, uh, if it is a uh, uh, if it, is, it can be a no, it can be just a benign uh, lump it uh, may not be cancerous lump uh, there are fibroids that uh, develops uh, and the fibroids may not also uh, always turn into cancer uh, no, but, but the point is that whenever there is a lump uh, what we feel or what what a patient feels uh, is that uh, there is a stiffness Right, there is a change in the stiffness. So, uh, in case of breast cancer if there is a formation of lump that particular lump will have different stiffness compared to other area of the breast. So, one thing that we understand from this particular uh, uh, stiffness is that we can design a sensor that can be used to measure the stiffness of tissue. So, stiffness of the tissue or elasticity of the tissue can be one of the parameter to understand uh, or to diagnose cancer at early stage right. So, we will try to see how we can um, understand this particular uh, 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 tissue related cancer. Uh, to do that uh, if we see the uh, uh, slide what we see is the we are looking at the uh, gold standard. Gold standard in case of breast cancer uh, is to go for MRI and mammography and uh, uh, if the MRI confirms the uh, there is a suspicious region right you can see here the suspicious region here also there is a suspicious region then the clinician would ask for the biopsy. Biopsy is you have to take the tissue out and then need to understand the tissue properties. Right. So, uh, in this case once the tissue is out uh, it is sent to the path lab where they look for different markers H and E, P 63, estrogen, postrogen that is also called marker called HER right uh, and then using this markers biomarkers right and uh, the, the final conclusion or final diagnosis would be a patient is having cancer or a uh, patient is not having cancer. Right. In this particular case, in this particular uh, techniques there is one drawback and that is that there are very high number of false positive and false negative results. So, how can we reduce this false positive and false negative result that is our goal alright. So, first thing that we will learn in this particular uh, topic is can we understand the stiffness of tissue. Right. So, you see that if, if the tissue is taken out right from the biopsy when the tissue is taken out it is sliced into several parts you can see here uh, this is for immunohistochemistry and special staining uh, this is for SEM analysis and this is we can use for our experiment which is our MEMS experiment 
right. And when you look at the tissue, the morphology of the tissue is also different. You can see the surface morphology of this tissue, whether it is stromal tissue, whether it is epithelial tissue, right. If it is a cancerous tissue, the morphology would be different. Here you can see if the normal tissue morphology is different. Right. So, from the morphology itself we can see that there is some difference in the tissue properties. Right. So, how can we now uh, measure the stiffness of tissue? So, once the slice is out, the slice is kept on the uh, microgrid as you can see here. This microgrid is nothing but a mesh, hmm? mesh. If you have seen mosquito mesh at your home similar to mosquito mesh, but it is a extremely micron in uh, uh, dimension. That means, that the width and the spacing of this mesh the lines uh, are uh, the width is about micron and the line spacing is also about few microns. So, uh, this is a mesh and is called micro grid uh, on which we can place the breast tissue and then we will see what kind of tool or a device uh, can be used to measure the stiffness. So, if I go if I go to the next slide, we will see what are the uh, what is that device. But before we I move to the next slide, let us see one more uh, thing in this slide is that uh, a woman of all ages, women of all ages are encouraged to perform breast self exams at once at least once a month. Okay, once a month, every woman is encouraged or are if it is women are encouraged uh, to perform breast self exams. While uh, women, uh, women in the in the age of forty to fifty four, age of forty to fifty four, every year they should go for mammography. While those who are fifty five and above should go every two years once for mammography. All right. So this is something that is required as an awareness is an awareness. We are not aware of diseases, we are not aware of uh, things around us uh, and that is why there are large number of uh, deaths. So, if you are learning this particular subject also try to aware the people around you, your loved ones, your relatives, your, your you know uh, friends and, and understand this, this kind of diseases. So, that more we understand more we are aware less number of deaths will happen around us. Right. So, awareness is very important along with understanding engineering and creating new devices, but if you are not aware then we will reach to a stage that already cancer has been uh, you know uh, at that particular stage or final stage that it is very difficult to re, uh, you know uh, cure the patient. Right. So, when I talk about awareness is just like what kind of program, what kind of screening methods that are available in market that we can use to understand the, the uh, wellness for our body. Right, everything is working well within our body. There, there are uh, there are programs available to understand those things. That is what I mean by awareness. So when we go to uh, uh, this particular slide, what we see is we see a piezoresistive micro cantilever. Piezoresistive micro cantilever. What's the role of piezoresistive micro cantilever? The uh, the uh, the cantilever. The role of a cantilever is just to you know uh, uh, if if we are using uh, it in AFM, if we are using it in AFM, it's called atomic force microscopy. Then its role would be to let us know the surface roughness of the film. If the cantilever is integrated with a piezo resistor, you can see here. If a in if a uh, cantilever is integrated with a piezo resistor, then whenever there is a strain in the cantilever, whenever cantilever bends, there will be strain in the cantilever, and this strain will cause change in the piezo resistive material. So the piezo resistivity would change depending on how much force we are applying to the cantilever, and we can measure this by change in resistance. That means, if I measure the resistance across this two pad right depending on the how much my cantilever is bending depending on how much my cantilever is bending there will be strain induced into the piezo resistor and corresponding to this change is to this strain I would see the change in the resistance right. So, the point is how we can create this piezo resistive micro cantilever and how we can use this to understand the surface or the tissue properties, surface of a tissue or the tissue properties. 
right. So, as you see there is uh, this is a top view, this is a top view is an optical photograph, this is an SEM image, uh, these two are SEM images and this is a chip, there is one single chip at the end of this chip which you cannot see there is a cantilever. This is not visible uh, with a naked eye, so this is fine all right. So, uh, what is there on the tip and the tip of this cantilever as you can see there is an SU8 material, this tip is made up of SU8, here you can see here SU8 tip right. So, what is SU8? SU8 is nothing but negative photoresist, SU8 is a negative photoresist. Hmm. We have seen photolithography and in photolithography we have seen there are two types of photoresist, one is positive photoresist, second is negative photoresist. SU8 falls under the category of negative photoresists, negative photoresist right. Uh, there are sev several advantage of using SU8 and that we will discuss later on. Right now just focus that you see there is a tip, there is a cantilever, this is this cantilever is completely released you can see that you know the, the back side of the cantilever is not any more uh, connected with the silicon wafer, this is a silicon wafer you can see all the lines right. So, this cantilever is completely released ok. Now, there is a piezo resistor embedded within the cantilever you can see here right embedded within the cantilever and the, the thickness of this cantilever, the thickness of this cantilever is about 4 to 5 microns. The thickness of SU8 tip is around 10 microns, 10 microns ok. Now, you can see here this cantilever is also completely released, but there is a bend in the cantilever, you can see this bend right. So, why this bending occurs, what is the role, why, why this cantilever is bent and the cantilever that you can see on the left side is not bent, it is straight that is the first question. Second question how we can embed the piezo resistor all right. Two things we right now understand that there is a piezo resistor cantilever, one is a straight cantilever, second is a bent cantilever and this role of cantilever would be to understand the tissue properties, to understand the elasticity of the tissue ok, we will see how. So, now on the screen what you see is a piezo resistive micro cantilever schematic, schematic diagram where the tip probe tip the thickness is written, radius is written right, cantilever beam is there, there is a piezo resistor, its dimensions are given right and then there is a contact pad, this is the contact pad through which we will measure the resistance ok this is a piezo resistive cantilever, another piezo resistive cantilever where you can see it is completely released, it is completely released and there is a piezo resistor embedded onto the cantilever. Now, how can we embed or how can we integrate the piezo resistive material or piezo resistive sensor in the cantilever beam all right. So, to do that we will start with a wafer that is called SOI, SOI it is silicon on insulator. So, what does that mean? You see this is silicon right, this is silicon, this green thing green line is what silicon dioxide and on the top of this green line we again have silicon right. So, this looks like this top silicon is there is on the oxide material that means silicon on insulator, silicon on insulator, insulator is our SiO2, silicon is the top silicon. So, you can see that you know the silicon on oxide or a silicon on insulator right this is our starting substrate right 
and there are several process flow there are there are several steps there is a process flow there is a step to reach to this particular piezoresistive cantilever what are these steps what are these steps let us see uh, on the on the uh, before we go to the next slide let us see the this particular diagram which is on the left bottom you can see that there is a SUA tip cantilever to be released you can see this is not released right now so uh, you can see the oxide you can see oxide surface of SOI wafer right then there is a silicon nitride uh, and uh, then there is a silicon nitride on SOI in this particular area silicon nitride is etched silicon nitride etched for releasing cantilever right this everything is written over here and there is a role of silicon nitride in this particular piezo resistive cantilever right the silicon nitride role is to compensate the stress due to the silicon oxide film the role of silicon nitride is to compensate the stress that is obtained due to silicon dioxide film so how does it work how does this work now, this is our first step we took SOI wafer, second step second step is we are growing silicon dioxide right see here there are some, some colors given so that we can understand what each color represents. The first one that is purple in color shows silicon nitride, next one which is green in color shows silicon dioxide, next one which is gray in color is called silicon, next one is gold is about gold in color then yellow is boron resistor blue is cross link su8 and orange kind of stuff is boron contact okay so our second step is to, second step is to grow oxide on soi first step is soi sorry second step is oxide that is our SiO2 on SOI right. Third step, third step, third step is to create a window, create window in oxide right top layer oxide you can see here the window is created how this is created using photolithography we all know what are the what are the steps in photolithography first is spin coating spin coating spin coating of what photoresist second step is soft bake third step mask alignment and exposure UV exposure right. Next step, next step photoresist developer, next step, next step would be hard bake, hard bake right and next step would be you etch whatever the material perform etching of the unwanted material and then finally, you strip photoresist. Stripping of photoresist is done using acetone right. These are steps for photolithography we already know. Using these steps, using these steps what we have done? We have created a window in silicon dioxide, window in silicon dioxide. So, once the window is created in silicon dioxide, what is the next step? Next step is you diffuse diffuse boron resistor right you diffused boron resistor that means the step that you have created step you have created if you see the top surface top surface looks like this This is a top surface. Which one? Point number three. Here, mm -hmm. this one. Next is we are diffusing boron because only this area oxide is not there, right? 
you can see here only in this area where I am drawing the pattern the oxide is not there, a remaining area there is an oxide. So, we are diffusing boron in this particular area that is why we say boron resistor, boron resistor that is why we have shown by yellow color right. Next step, what is the next step? Next step is we grow silicon dioxide, we grow silicon dioxide on this particular resistor and next step would be create window in silicon dioxide for for boron contact for boron contact you can see right after this after growth. So, this is our fourth step right we have created a window then we have created an uh, oxide and now we have created a window for the boron contact. Next step would be next step would be diffuse diffuse boron contact. So, if you see how it will look like there was a resistor right Now, only this area is open ok. You can see I am deliberately drawing something what you can see there is oxide here everywhere except this area you see this area that goes in right. So, if I if I diffuse boron contact this boron contact will overlap boron resistor only in this particular area right only in this particular area. Thus, we will have a contact to the resistor through the boron contact. We will have contact to the resistor use through the boron contact right and the boron concentration for the contact region is higher compared to the boron concentration of the resistor. That is because we need to finally, get a uh, gold contact on the boron contact to form the ohmic contact right on this we will have a ohmic contact we will see. Next step would be next step is you deposit next step is deposit chrome gold and pattern pattern it. Hmm. So, here what we are getting we are getting a long contact pad out. So, where are we you see here this contact pads. So, if you see I am drawing here it goes all the way here come back here here and then this particular box same way in this area it goes here goes here goes here comes here and then like this right. So, this particular the one that I have drawn with red is the one that we are right now on which is point number 8. Next step, next step is ninth step, ninth step as you can see we have ninth step would be we have deposited or grown silicon nitride. you can see here ninth step deposited a grown silicon nitride and create window and create a window you can see here right where we have grown silicon nitride and created a window. Step number 9 ok. Now, what next step would be you etch you etch silicon dioxide and silicon all right. So, tenth step so I am just uh, rubbing it down rubbing it down the first four or five steps
So, what is my 10th step? 10th step is H can you see ok let me go down so you can see clearly is it better ok H H silicon dioxide and silicon right. Now, the question is when should I stop etching silicon dioxide and silicon. Now, you see below silicon dioxide and silicon. So, first you have to etch silicon dioxide then you will see silicon below it when you etch silicon you again see silicon dioxide below it. But when you did the reference silicon you do not have to worry when it can be stopped because silicon dioxide will act as a mask or etch stopping mask for silicon because you see uh, uh, silicon dioxide will not be affected will not be affected in silicon agent ok. So, that is the next step which is the etching of silicon dioxide and silicon. What is the next step? Next step is SU8 deposition or SU8 coating we cannot deposit coating and patterning for forming tip right SU8 spin coating and patterning to form the tip right. Next step I think this is number 10, 10, 11, 12 mm. yeah. Next step what is the next step? Create window window on the back side of of the wafer where we have created a window you see here we have created a window where we want to etch silicon completely and release our cantilever right. We have created a window where we want to etch our silicon uh, completely and create a cantilever. Which silicon? The silicon which is the base silicon not the silicon which is grown on insulator because the silicon which is grown on insulator will help to form the cantilever. Alright. So, create a window on the back side of the wafer ok fine we have created now what. So, to create this you, uh, you have to uh, understand that we when we create it we have to remove silicon nitride followed by silicon dioxide we have to etch silicon nitride followed by etching silicon dioxide. Last step last step in this particular case would be to etch silicon edge silicon right we can use we can use DRI to edge the silicon DRI is your deep reactive and etching deep reactive and etching ok. So, this is step number 13 step number 13. So, what we have seen is after following 13 step we are able to release our micro cantilever and Another thing that we have observed is we are using boron as the piezo resistive material and the silicon that is on insulator is our polysilicon or it can be single crystal silicon. The point is that you can also grow silicon on insulator and perform uh, and perform the experiment and evaluate its performance by uh, or with uh, the cantilever that you can make. Uh, using silicon on insulator which is single crystal silicon ok. So, uh, piezo resistor is formed by diffusing boron into the polysilicon material or single crystal silicon material and this will result in a creation of a cantilever or let us say this my hand is a cantilever creation of a cantilever with a tip with a tip right. So, if I now use the cantilever in this particular fashion right and I press the cantilever 
on a surface what will happen the tip will touch first which is this tip SU8 when it tip touches my cantilever will move depending on how hard the surface is right how hard my the surface is this is my surface this is my cantilever I am holding my cantilever in this particular fashion. So, SU8 tip that was on the top now it is at bottom right and now I am pressing the cantilever against the surface and depending on the surface my cantilever will bend my cantilever will bend right. So, this is the phenomenon. Now, when it bends there is a piezo resistor embedded in the cantilever when the piezo resistor is embedded within the cantilever what will happen? The, the there will be change in resistance based on how much is the bending of the cantilever because based on the bending of the cantilever there will be a strain that is induced in the in the piezo resistor that will cause change in resistance. So, what we understand that now from here if I instead of having the surface I have a surface which is the again hard surface on which if I place a tissue. So, if I have a place a tissue on this surface what will happen now? Now, if I press the cantilever depending on the stiffness of tissue my cantilever will bend right. So, this change in resistance will correspond to the stiff tissue stiffness right. This is how we can measure the stiffness of the tissue. So, if you see here in the next slide what we have done we have got the uh, uh, slice of the tissue right uh, the slice from the benign region slice from the tumor region. So, uh, just understand this if the cancer is somewhere here in this area okay, and this is a tissue this, uh, this whole thing is a tissue cancer is in this area. So, this area is cancerous this area is not called normal is not called normal it is called benign benign all right. So, it is not uh, cancer, but it is benign ok. When you slice the tissue you can go for IHC you can go for mechanical characterization that means understanding the stiffness you can go for HNE image and you can go for FESCM or field emission scanning electron microscopy FESCM is field emission scanning electron microscopy all right. This is a simple electronic module that we can use where your piezo resistor microcurrent deliver is given by PMC it is connected in a voltage divider fashion which you can see right over here and correspond. So, if your voltage is plus 5 volt my output here would be 2.5 volts that 2.5 volts I am uh, applying to LM358 followed by sensor ray for that finally, so display on my system right. This is just one method there can be multiple methods to use a signal conditioning circuit along with a sensor. The disadvantage here is that already we are uh, down to 2.5 volts. So, our range of change is extremely small if I do not have this and if I have a Wishstone bridge I will have a probable uh, better signal conditioning circuit, but that is not idea uh, uh, which kind of circuit you can use you can always use a better circuit. The idea is that if I now have a piezo resistor micro and deliver and if I press it against a tissue how can I see the change in the uh, resistance or change in the voltage right. So, you can see here initially it is close to 2.5 volts when both the uh, resistors are balanced that means whatever the resistance of the piezo resistor microcurrent deliver is there same resistor I will use it here the value of the resistor uh, would be same uh, and then initially what I what I will have because of the potential divider I will have a voltage of 2.5 volts. As I go on pressing my cantilever you can see here 0, 5, 10, 15, 20 microns when I press my cantilever I will be able to see the change in voltage because there will be change in resistance and that change in voltage will depend on what kind of tissue I am using right. So, there is a benign epithelial a cancer epithelial you can see benign epithelial and cancer epithelial you can clearly see that the benign epithelial has a different range compared to the cancer epithelial same way if I consider uh, a stromal region. So, cancer can occur in epithelial region cancer can occur in stromal region if I understand stromal region then you can very clearly see the benign stromal and cancer stromal there is again a difference. Same way if I take about second patient you can again see that the cancer is different than benign 
cancer is different than benign. Right. So, from here I can understand that uh, my this change in resistance can show me whether the tissue is cancerous or not. Because the cancerous tissue would show a different change in voltage compared to the normal tissue or benign tissue. Right. So, what we have learned until now is we can develop a piezo resistive micro cantilever to understand the or study the mechanical property of tissue. Now, the question is if I can study mechanical property of tissue, can I study electrical property of tissue? And if I can study electrical property of tissue, can I study other modalities like thermal property of tissue? Right? So, because if I can understand the stiffness of the tissue, then I can understand the change in resistance of the tissue, then I can also if I change the resistance of the tissue I know, then I can understand the thermal conductivity of tissue. So, we are going towards measuring the electrical, mechanical and thermal property of tissue, but this is the first step where we are under understanding the mechanical property of tissue. Right? The next step would be how we can measure the electrical property of tissue. So, that thing where uh, uh, we will look at the electrical property of tissue we will see in the next uh, module uh, of the same lecture. Uh, and then the question is also that, that if I can measure mechanical, if I can measure electrical, can I measure mechanical and electrical together? You see there, there is a never ending quest, because now if I can do mechanical and electrical can I also do thermal? that means mechanical, electrical and thermal together. Right? So, if once I have a chip which has a mechanical, electrical, thermal what will I do and how can I operate this chip, how can I use this chip to diagnose cancer. Right? So, with that we will see uh, across this particular uh, lecture series. Uh, so, uh, just go through the uh, this particular module is a short module uh, where you will understand how we can uh, design a process flow for piezo resistor micro cantilever and this piezo resistor micro cantilever can be used to understand or to delineate between the benign and cancer also to delineate between epithelial and stromal region. Right? So, till then you take care, I will see you in the next module.